Hey, I'm Steve Krenz for Guitar Gathering, your home for the real nuts and bolts guitar learning. We're in the middle of a series talking about how music works, and this time we're going to be talking about intervals. So we've already covered half steps and whole steps, major scales, keys and key signatures, all of those uh, wonderful aspects of music are leading up to the, now this point of talking about intervals. So if you haven't already uh, checked out those previous lessons on this, uh, that might be helpful for you to do that. There's also a PDF that goes along for tonight. You can download that in the links below, and we're going to be dealing with the intervals section of that. So I hope you're doing well. If you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. First thing, an interval. Um, an interval is a distance, okay? So I know it's also a, a, um, an audio sound, you know, th this is a third and this is a sixth, you know, this is an octave, I know that. But what we're talking about is a distance, a distance in, the, in, in music. You know, if I'm in C, the distance from a C to a D is a second, a specific interval of a second. Distance from a C to an E is a wider interval, that's a third, and it goes up. C, C to F is a fourth, C to G is a fifth if you're just going on a C major scale. So what I want you to know is an interval is a distance. It's a distance in music that we're talking about. So to get us started off with, let's take a look at the, our old friend, the major scale. So in the major scale, we have, let's say if we're doing it in C major, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, okay? Now, the intervals are, there's the, the one, the distance from the first to the second would be called a second. The distance from the root to the third would be called a third. Distance from the root to the fourth would be a fourth, and so on. Fifth, sixth, seventh, and then the eighth would be what we call an octave in the business. Now, these intervals within the major scale are called diatonic intervals, diatonic. So as soon as you hear the word diatonic, that is telling you one thing within the major scale. We're talking about C's to G's and C's to E's, things that are in a C major scale. Okay, so we're not talking about a C to an E flat or a C to an F sharp or a, an A flat, things that are outside of the scale. We're not talking about that. We're talking about within the scale, and the word for that is diatonic. So as soon as you hear diatonic, just go, Poof, we're talking about things that are within the scale. So within the scale, we've got eight different intervals that we're worried about. The second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and then the octave, okay? Now, just, just to confuse the issue a little bit, the naming of these gets to be uh, a little problematic because the naming talks about the function of these uh, different notes, okay? So we break them up into two sets, okay? The first set is the second, the third, the sixth, and the seventh. Those particular intervals, the second, third, sixth, and seventh, are what we call in the biz major intervals. So we talk about major thirds and major sixths and major sevenths and major seconds. But the other intervals, the fourth, the fifth, and the octave, those we call in a subset, those are called perfect. So we talk about perfect fourths and perfect fifths and perfect octaves. We don't talk about major octaves, that doesn't make sense, or major fifths. Or, or a perfect third, that doesn't make sense. Major intervals are second, third, sixth, and seventh. Perfect intervals are the fourth, the fifth, and the octave. It's just naming. You're talking about naming at this point, because this is gonna get kind of confusing. So we've got the intervals within a scale. There's seven or eight if you count the octave, okay? That of those intervals, the second, third, sixth, and seventh, those are called major, the fourth, fifth, and the octave are called perfect, okay? That's the first thing that I want you to know. All right, so if I asked you, hey, if we're in the key of C and I want the major third, what would that be? All you have to do is figure out in a C major scale and go up to the third. C, D, 
E. Remember, C is always one, okay? D would be two, E would be three, C, D, E. So E would be the major third of uh, the key of C. If I was in the key of F and I said to you, hey, what's the second, or more correctly, the major second in the key of F, well, that would be the second step of, a, of an F major scale, which would be F, G. Okay, do you see, see what we're doing here? What if I said to you in the key of F, I wanted the perfect fourth? You would go to the fourth step in the key of F, which would be F, G, A, B flat, because of our key signatures that we learned last time. B flat, okay, so you have, to, you have to not only calculate your place in the scale, but you have to remember what is going on in that scale with the, um, the flats and sharps associated with the key in that scale, okay? So let's just practice this a couple, a little bit. Um, if I'm in the key of G, which has one sharp in it, an F sharp, and I said, hey, what's the major third in the key of G? Let's figure what that would be. That would be a G would be one, A would be two, B would be three. What if I said, hey, what's the major seventh in the key of G? Well, you gotta count it up. One, G is one, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. F sharp, you gotta remember there's still a sharp in there. So that would be the major seventh in the key of G. Now sometimes they'll be abbreviated and you just say, hey, what's the seventh, okay? But uh, more correctly in the naming, it would be said major seventh. Hey, what's the perfect fifth in the key of G? The perfect fifth in the key of G. G, A, B, C, D, that would be a D, okay? Perfect, fourth, fifth, an octave, major, second, third, sixth, and seventh, okay? Great, got that? All right, and the rest of it is practicing that out. So if you look at your interval pages and look at that first interval page that says, the wonderfully confusing world of interval naming. Okay, so we gotta get the names of them first because that's gonna get to be a real problem. We talked about intervals being a distance. That's the top little box. Then we split intervals up into diatonic, those within the major scale. And then, tricky, tricky, non-diatonic or harmonic intervals, those are not in the major scale, okay? Intervals that are not found in the major scale, okay? So those are our two types of intervals. Let's look at the diatonic side, okay? You'll notice we've split those up. The second, third, sixth, and seventh we said were major, the perfect ones are the fourth, fifth, and octave. See how that works? Okay. Now the rest of it is just practice, is just sheer practice. So flip over that page and you'll get to a, a, a sheet that says the diatonic intervals worksheet. All right, now that diatonic intervals worksheet, I gave you the first couple and then you have to solve them all from there, okay? Um, let's go look at number three on that page. It says in G, what is the second? So in that case, I would go to the key of G, remember that there's an F sharp in there, and I would go to the second step of a G scale, which of course is an A, okay? So that's a G to an A. So what the second in the key of G would be an A. In B, in f number four, it says in B flat, what is the fourth? The perfect fourth, okay? So that would be, you have to go to the key of B flat, Keep track of your key signatures, B flat, C, D, E flat. That would be an E flat, okay? And then I ask it to you in a bunch of different ways. The second in the key of D is this, and the fourth is that, things like that. All right, so those are diatonic intervals. If you look at the next sheet after that, you'll see I split them up by the key, okay? So di diatonic intervals by key worksheet. Okay, so in the key of C, what's the third, what's the seventh, what's the fourth, what's the sixth, things like that, okay? Um, and I take you through a, a bunch of different keys. Now, after that, um, we get into a sheet that says more challenging diatonic intervals. So now I start getting into 
Um, this would be the fifth page of our interval section there. And this is ones in trickier keys with more sharps or more flats. So like number one on that page that says more challenging diatonic intervals, it says in E flat, or excuse me, in A flat, what is the third? So I have to go through the key of A flat, A flat, B flat, C, and the answer would be C. So do you see how all of this is dependent on the knowledge that we learned last time about our keys and key signatures? So if you're still a little fuzzy on the key of G is what, and I've, if I have two flats, what key is that? If you're still a little fuzzy on that, go back and review those keys and key signatures, because from this point on, boy, we're assuming that you've got that on lock, okay? So um, if you're a little fuzzy on that still, then go back and review those. We had some, in the handouts, we had some flashcards. We had all kinds of things that you could, you could do to, uh, to uh, learn those keys and key signatures. But from now on, man, we need to, we're assuming that you have got those on lock. So, all right, so that's the diatonic intervals, all right? Now, let's look at the other side of the coin, okay? the harmonic intervals. So go back, I'm sorry to make you go back and forth, go back to the first page of those interval sheets, back where we had all those little diagrams in the boxes and things. Okay, so we have the diatonic ones that we talked about, but now we're gonna talk and look at the other side, the non-diatonic, the, the intervals that are not in the harmonic, not in the major scale, which are called harmonic intervals, okay? Um, so let's talk about those. Well, we still have it, it's still split up into the second, the third, the sixth, and the seventh are still called major, and the fourth, fifth, and octave are still called perfect, but now we're gonna adjust those. We can either adjust them one of two ways. I can either take them a half step up or a half step down. Okay, so let's talk about adjusting them a half step down. If I take a major interval, so let's talk about the major intervals, the second, third, the sixth, and seventh. If I take a major interval, and I lower it a half step, that becomes what we call minor. Now, pause just for a second here. I know that these are the same terminology as chords that are coming up, A minor and C major and things like that, and diminished and augmented. I know they're the same. We're in interval land right now, so don't, don't jump ahead to chord land. Uh, in your in your in your learning there today we're just in intervals we're not putting these together just yet we're in intervals so we have major and minor intervals and augmented intervals and diminished intervals things like that if I take a major interval the second third sixth and seventh and I lower it a half step we call that minor so if I was in the key of C and I said to you hey what is a minor third in the key of C well how do we solve that problem I go dial up the key of C in my head and its key signature, which has no sharps or flats. I go to the third step of that, C, D, E, but they don't want the E, they want the flatted third, the minor third. So it would be an E flat, C to an E flat. C to an E flat would be the minor third in the key of C. All right, let's practice one more. What if I said to you, hey, I want, uh, let's switch keys. Let's go to the key of uh, F, okay, which has one flat in it. And I said, in the key of F, what is the minor third? In key of F, what would be the minor third? So now I have to dial up the key signature of F, go up to its third, F, G, A, and then down a half step. And that would be the minor third in the key of F, which would be an A flat. Okay, do you see how we're doing this? Well, let's, let's take it out a little bit further. What if I said I wanted the minor seventh in the key of F? Minor seventh in the key of F. Okay, well, I have to go up to the seventh step. F, one, G is two, A, three, B flat's four, C, five, D, six, E, that's the seventh, but I don't want the seventh, that would be the major seventh, I want the minor seventh in the key of F, which would be an E flat, okay, an E flat. F up to E is the seventh, but I, I want that adjusted, so I go down, and that's be an E flat. Okay, all right, now let's, let's put our thinking caps on here for just a little bit. Let's take you to a harder key, 
okay? Let's say I'm in the key of, oh, I don't know, A flat, A flat, and I want the minor second. Okay, wait a minute, wait just a minute here. A flat, well, that's got four different flats in it, so the second in A flat is a B flat, but I don't want that. I want it down a half step. I need a B flat flat, a double flat. So occasionally in these intervals that, that in the harmonic interval side of things, you're going to end up with double flats. If I have to flat an already flatted note, I call that a, a double flat. What if I need to sharp an already sharped note? I call that a double sharp, okay? You're not gonna see them very much. The temptation will be for you, but Steve, a B flat that's flatted, a B double flat, isn't that just an A? Can't I just write A? Nope, 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 nope. You can't because an A in the key of F would be the major third, okay? But I know it's an A, you know that a B double flat's an A, but the name tells its function. The name tells its function. So that's what's, what, what, we're, uh, what we're getting out after there. Or we weren't in F, we were in G flat. But um, um, All right. So that's a little bit how harmonic intervals work for major. Okay, if I want to lower a major interval, it becomes minor, what we call minor. Okay. What if I wanted to raise up an, a major interval and, and make it, make it uh, up a half step? Well, we call that augmented, okay? So if I'm in the key of C and I say, hey, what's an augmented second? There's a C. Well, the second would be a D, and I'm not going minor. That would be a, a, a minor second. I'm going augmented. So I'm raising that D up. So that would be a D sharp, a D sharp, okay? Not to be confused with a minor third, which would be an E flat, okay? So the naming tells you the function of what's going on. So I know a D sharp's an E flat, and I know you know that as well, but the name is telling what's going on in the chord, so we have to be accurate on the name, okay? So if I say augmented second, it's gonna be some kind of a D, in this case, a D sharp. See how that works? All right, so there you go with uh, with major intervals. If I want to lower them a half step, I call them minor. If I want to raise them up a half step, make that interval larger, I make it augmented, okay? And so that's what is for, for uh, uh, major intervals. Let's practice a couple of those. Um, if I'm in the key of, let's say, G, and I wanted a minor third in the key of G, a minor third, what would that be, do you think? We have G up to A. The third would be a B, but I want a minor third, so that would be a B flat, okay? What if I stay in the key of G and I want a minor sixth? A minor sixth. What do you think that might be? Well, I count up in the key of G to its sixth, G, A, B, C, D, E, and I wanted a minor sixth, so that would be an E flat. So the distance, intervals being a distance, from a G to an E flat is a distance of a minor sixth, okay? Um, there you go. All right, let's, uh, and then as you get into other keys, it gets a little, uh, you have to keep in track of the key signature. All right, let's, uh, that works for, for major intervals. If I go half step below, becomes minor, if I go half step up, it becomes augmented. All right, but what about the perfect intervals, which are the fourth, the fifth, and the octave? What about those? Well, if I lower a perfect interval, it becomes diminished is what the, we call that, okay? So in C, if I said, hey, what's the diminished fifth? You would go up to the fifth in the key of C, C, D, E, F, G, and lower it a half step. G flat, okay? Not to be confused with an augmented fourth, but this is a diminished fifth, so it's gonna be some kind of a G. Be a G flat, okay? Um, what if I said, um, what if, that's if it's going, going low. Um, let's do another one. What if I'm in the key of B flat, 
okay, the key of B flat, and I want its diminished fifth. What would that be? In the key of B flat, its diminished fifth. B flat, C, D, E flat, F would be the fifth. F flat would be the diminished fifth. Okay, don't get freaked out because it's F flat because you're going to end up with F flats and, 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 and B sharps at times and, and even F double sharps at times. So don't, don't freak out about it. Just go to the note that you need to and then adjust it however you need. Okay? All right, so what about perfect intervals? Well, perfect intervals, if I lower that a half step, it becomes uh, diminished. If I raise it up a half step, it becomes augmented, just like on the major intervals. So you can have augmented fifths and augmented fourths and things like that. What if I said, hey, I'm in the key of, uh, oh, I don't know, D. Let's say I'm in the key of D, and I wanted an augmented fifth. Well, in the key of D, that would D, E, F sharp, G, A, and then I raise that up. An augmented fifth in the key of D would be an A sharp, okay? Uh, what if I'm in the key of, oh, I don't know, uh, 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 a flat. I'm in the key of A flat, and I want an augmented fourth in the key of A flat. So in A flat, I go up to its fourth, which would be a D flat, but I want it to be augmented. So I raise that up a half step, and it would become just a regular old D. An A flat to a D natural is an augmented fourth. So we're always relating them to the lower note. That's the where we, where we start as the reference and then we go everything up from there. Okay? Cool? Are you with me so far? Did I lose you? All right, so just to review, in this big world of ours, we've got two kinds of intervals, diatonic, those within the scale, and non-diatonic or harmonic intervals are those intervals that are not within the scale. Within those two subsets, we've got the major intervals, which are the second, third, sixth, and seventh. And then we've got the perfect intervals, which are called the fourth, the fifth, and the octave. Perfect octave, perfect fifths, perfect fourths, major thirds, major sevenths, things like that. So that's the naming of it. Now, if I alter those, in the ma if I alter a major interval down a half step, it becomes minor. What's the minor third of this, the minor second of that, the minor seventh of this? What if I, if I want to go up a half step, that becomes augmented. It's called augmented. What's the augmented second, the augmented sixth of that, okay? If I'm in on one of the perfect intervals, the fourth, fifth, or octave, if I lower one of those a half step, it becomes diminished. So we have diminished fifths, um, things like that. If I raise those up, it's still called augmented, so I can have augmented fourths and augmented fifths and things like that. All right, there you go. Lots of ground that we have covered. Now, for me to explain that took, you know, 20 minutes or so. For you to actually work that out through all of the keys is gonna take a lot of practice. That's why I gave you a lot of worksheets to, to go through these intervals. I did them sometimes by just naming the interval we do the diatonic ones first, and then we do the harmonic ones. You know, in G, what is the augmented fourth? In B flat, what's the diminished, uh, or uh, B flat, what is the minor second? So we have those, the harmonic intervals. Then I do them by key. But Steve, there's like a thousand of these. There's like, actually not a thousand, it's just about eight pages of these. It's gonna take you a while to do them. It's gonna take you a while to do them, okay? Um, why do we have to do this? This feels like work. It's starting to feel like work. I don't wanna, I don't wanna do this, this feels like work. Okay, just relax. It's just calculations. It's just calculations. It's just worksheets. You just do them and you do them and you, and you get better at it to where eventually someone can yell across the bandstand to you Hey, what's the minor seventh? Or make sure and play the minor seventh in this song that's in B flat. And you go, great, no problem. I'll be playing A flats. Okay, well, how did I know that? Am I a musical genius? No, I just solved these dumb worksheets several times, okay? So the difference between you 
uh, understanding this and the difference between you actually having it under your fingers and, and, and being able to instantly recall it is about solving these problems about 100 times. That's the only difference. So if you, if you solve them 12 times and you go, okay, I've done a few of these, I kind of get it, great. You not, you're not going to know it well enough when we start getting into next week spelling triads. What's a C chord? What's an F minor? What's a G diminished? Things like that, you're gonna, not going to have the speed to be able to do that. So this is more about speed than it is uh, uh, anything else. So just work on these and, and jumping around these keys and that'll be the best thing for you to do at this point. Okay. Now, next session, we're going to have a workout and we're actually going to work through a lot of these. Um, we're not really talking about how they apply on guitar just yet, but we're almost there. This is a C augmented chord. Inside of this is a C, an E, a G sharp, and a B flat. How did I know that? Because of where we're going. Next week is triads, and after that we're going to get into seventh chords and, and all sorts of wonderful things like that. That's where we're going. Okay. So, hey, I'm Steve Krenz for Guitar Gathering. Thanks for coming along and learning with us, and we'll see you in the workout next time.